Have you ever seen a lightboard video? It's basically a whiteboard style presentation, but delivered through glass so that you can see the presenter as they do their work. The trouble with using a whiteboard in a presentation is that your back is towards the audience. And even in an online presentation with the Microsoft Whiteboard app, you basically have the same issue. Your video and the content are separate. And people will focus in on the content and not on you. So creating your own lightboard setup where you can make eye contact with the audience while you create and teach seems like a brilliant idea. That is if you have the space and the DIY prowess. Scott Hanselman, a partner program manager at Microsoft, recently shared a video showing how you could set up a virtual light board or a glass board with your Surface and an app called OBS Studio. Now, Scott shared a number of videos about using OBS that I'll link to below. But this idea was from a blog post by Rob Farley, who's a fellow Aussie and someone from the Microsoft data platform world. Scott was excited by Rob's idea and then made a video about it. And I was blown away by seeing what Scott did with it. Look, it's a little technical, but it's actually very achievable if you're a bit tech savvy. OBS Studio is free open source software and it's very powerful. So it can be a little overwhelming at first. So I'm gonna walk you through this step by step so that you can recreate it. I'm gonna use my Surface Studio, but you could do this on any current Surface device or even a HP, Lenovo, Dell, or any two-in-one device with pen support. But the solution does work your processor a little extra. So on older or low spec models, you might find that performance suffers. It helps to have two screens to use, but it's not essential. Surface devices have the best built-in webcams on the market, but I'm actually going to recommend that you have your device flat on the desk for this setup. Now, if you have your device flat, your Surface webcam is going to be looking straight up your nose, which is not brilliant. By the way, we did a video on using external webcams for your Surface recently, so I'll link to that below as well. It's also ideal to have a dark, uncluttered background with good lighting. I'm going to use my sit-stand desk here in the standing position for this style of presentation as the ergonomics are much better and presenting is much easier standing up. The first step is to download OBS from obsproject.com and install it. Once you've set it up and run it the first time, it'll ask you about your intentions. OBS is often used for live streaming and for recording content, but in our example, we want to use the virtual camera in Teams or Zoom. So we'll select this virtual camera option. If you already did this and chose another option, don't worry, you can change it if you need to by clicking on Tools, Auto Configuration Wizard. Once we're in the program, we'll see a blank window where a preview of our video is going to appear. Using the tools at the bottom of the program, we're going to create a new scene first. Click on the plus icon in the scenes list. I'm going to call this scene Lightboard. Once we have a scene, we need to put some things into the scene. You can use scenes to quickly switch between different combinations of video input. So you could switch to a different camera or an app or both together. For the task today, we'll just stick with the one scene. Now, we'll click on the plus icon in the sources list and we'll start by configuring our camera. The camera is called a video capture device, so we'll select that. Use the create new option and type in a name for your camera. This will appear in the sources list. I'll call mine Olympus because I'm going to use my mirrorless camera as a webcam using a capture card for this demo because it looks best. If you have an external webcam plugged in and ready, you'll select that from the list and name it appropriately. Or go ahead and use the inbuilt camera if that's all you have. Now we'll add our Microsoft Whiteboard program. So we'll need to have that running first. If you don't have the Whiteboard app, you should get it from the Microsoft Store. Now that I have that running, I'll switch back to OBS. Click the plus icon under Sources again, and we'll select Window Capture. This option allows you to stream any open window from your computer into your video feed. Choose the Create New option and type in Microsoft Whiteboard for the name. Press OK. You'll see a list of all of the programs that you have running on the next screen. And you select Microsoft Whiteboard from the list here and press OK. In the Sources list, make sure that your webcam is sitting below the whiteboard. Select one of your sources and use these arrows below to move them up or down in the order. So whiteboard should be at the top and your webcam at the bottom. You'll also need to play around with the window sizes here to get them right. Click on the webcam in the source list and make sure that it's sitting correctly in the preview window. You may need to resize it using the red border and reposition it in the scene. Do the same with the Microsoft whiteboard source by clicking on it 
resize it and reposition to suit. Notice that the output of the app might be different to the size of your video output. If you play with the size of your whiteboard app, try and match the aspect ratio of the video and it will automatically update in OBS. So now that we've got the sizing right, we need to make the background of the whiteboard disappear. So let's jump over to the whiteboard app. We need to set the background color to a different color because we're going to use a green screen effect in OBS to make it disappear. So let's select the menu in the top right corner and choose Format Background. We'll choose this light green color from the options. Now that our background is light green, let's go back into OBS. Under the Sources list here, you'll need to click on Microsoft Whiteboard. Just above it, under the Preview window, you'll see Filters. Click on Filters and use the plus icon in the bottom left corner to create a new filter. Leave the name as Chroma Key and press OK. We need to change a few options here on this filter to make this work. So we'll start by dropping down the key color type list and selecting Custom. Click on Select Color and then pick Screen Color. This allows you to pick any color from the screen as it appears right now. So you may need to arrange your windows first so that the whiteboard is showing when you do this. I used Windows Snap to split the screen. If you don't know how to do that, I'll leave a link to our video on that below. So click on Pick Screen Color and click on that green color in the Whiteboard app. You should now see it reflected here at the bottom right as HTML color hash E5F3CC. You could even just type that code in if you prefer. Press OK to close the color picker. So now that we've set that light green color to be transparent using chroma key, we need to tweak a few settings here. We're going to set similarity to one and smoothness to one. The rest of the settings we'll leave as default and we'll close this window. You should now see that your app is see-through and you're appearing in the whiteboard. Grab your pen and start drawing to see what happens. So that's the setup done. This scene will be saved in OBS for the next time. But how do we get this into Teams or Zoom? We'll show you both. Firstly, you need to have OBS running. And you need to start the virtual camera. Under Controls on the bottom right, click on Start Virtual Camera. If you've only got the one camera, when you go into Teams or Zoom and you join a call, you might find that your camera's blank. That's because OBS is already using the camera and it can't be accessed by two programs at once. But don't worry, you're going to see the camera working in Teams or Zoom if you do the next step. If you're using a separate camera, which I do recommend, so that you get the best angle and setup, you won't have this problem. Now firstly in Zoom, if you're on a call or in a meeting already, you can change the camera on the fly by selecting the up arrow alongside the video icon and selecting OBS Virtual Camera. In Teams, when you're in a call, the three dot menu, device settings and change the camera. You should now be seeing your video from OBS appearing in your video call. But notice that the preview in Teams or Zoom is backwards. Don't worry, everyone at the other end sees it the right way around. The preview in OBS is actually exactly what everyone else will see. It's the right way around. So watch that and ignore the preview in Teams or Zoom. Now you're ready to use your glass board. So go for it and have fun. By the way, you could set up OBS to be your main camera in both Teams and Zoom, but you'd need to remember to have OBS running before any video call. In my experience, having OBS running is going to consume between 3 and 10% of your processor at any time, and that will impact your performance and battery life. So I generally wouldn't recommend it. Just start it up when you need to do something special like this. To go back to your normal camera setup, stop the virtual camera in OBS and close OBS. If you were using your inbuilt webcam, give it a couple of seconds to free up the camera. Then go back into your video call and select your usual webcam. In our recent Science Behind the Surface Pen series, we talked about the effectiveness of low formality presenting where you build the content in front of the audience as you go. A 2008 study by Savoy, Proctor and Salvendi found that in the age of PowerPoint presentations, chalk and talk teaching is still important. Here's what they said. If students are expected to retain information and or concepts that are best conveyed through dialogue or verbal explanation, traditional presentations, that is chalk and talk, appear to be best. So this tool, whilst it might be a little technical to set up and understand, 
allows you to chalk and talk in a very engaging and personal manner. So start thinking and planning how you could use this in your next video presentation and rehearse it with your colleagues and friends. Let us know what you do with this in the comments below and remember to like this video if you found it helpful. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we produce a new Surface Productivity video every week, so make sure that you do. And if you're an existing subscriber, share this video on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, or whatever social platform you use.